All right, guys, it's Alpha Heavy Gamer, and welcome to the channel. I wanted to make this video about the infrared missile arms race before something changes. You know, I could probably release this, and then Monday, uh, Gaijin will have changed something else, which makes this video completely irrelevant. But um, while I have the information I have, let's talk about this. So let's get into it. So the R73 um, was performing very well. You know, we'll just we'll just come out there and say it was looking real good on the dev server and as a consequence of that performance you know that raw power of the r73 the aim9m had to be released now i'm guessing this is earlier than gaijin would have liked um but it is what it is now i know mike goes boom um talked about the python 4 maybe being released you know i i don't really see that happening i don't think its introduction is realistic and i'll get into why a little bit later um, but the pacing threats right now, and I use pacing threats because, uh, you know, pretty much Russia and the U.S. have made a lot of weapons and proliferated them across a lot of nations. So those are the standards. So the pacing threats right now are the R-73 and the AM-9M. And the Magic 2, to an extent, um, uh, because it was revealed, at least um, I saw on Reddit by some of the data miners, that uh, the Magic 2 is getting some buffs, so that's good news, actually. I really like the Magic 2 missile. All right, so this meta, I think, should last when everything goes live, right, if nothing changes. And I'll talk about why in a bit. Um, so Gaijin is setting a qualitative bar here with the 9M and the R73, which is leading the pack. Now, that's good mid-80s tech right there. That's good mid-80s infrared technology. Now, it's easy to go, oh, well, I got mine and then push on from there. But what is unfortunate is a lot of people may be playing nations that are not receiving AM9Ms or R73s or even Magic 2s, right? So the US, the UK, France, uh, Italy, Russia, Israel, they're all getting either a new missile in the form of the 9M or the R73 or a buffed uh, Magic 2. Uh, France being the lucky exception with that. So nations like Sweden, Japan, Germany, and China don't get any counters to what is sure to be a 9M and R73 maelstrom. That's the big word of today. Um, so let's continue. The potential for a raffle stomp if you don't have these missiles is quite real. And unless Gaijin raises a qualitative bar once more or makes some exceptions, which I think is unlikely now, um, the nations I mentioned won't be able to keep up, at least until the last patch of the year, which is expected to be big, like JAS-39 Gripen big, I think the meta will probably change again as newer missiles are introduced. But right now, probably much to the uh, frustration of many, missiles like the Mika IR, you know, for the Mars 2000, that kind of missile is way too good right now. You know, and it doesn't stop there. Missiles like the IRST, for example, um, the A Darter, the ASRAM, you know, they're collectively at a performance level beyond where the 9M and the R73 are right now. The pacing threat level, um, I think would have to be at least an R73M or an AM9M-9, uh, like at a minimum, to justify uh, more advanced missiles like Python 4, the RST, the ASRAM, the Mica IR, and the A-Darter. But, you know, probably more likely with the way Gaijin thinks and how they justify things, it's more likely that you would need to have at least an R-74 or an AM-9X before you would see more advanced missiles, you know, like the IRIS-T and the Mica IR. So I've, I've been talking about these other missiles. Um, let me use one as an example so I can showcase how much more advanced they are. So the IRIS-T, for example, meaning uh, infrared imaging system, tail thrust vector control. So it's an, a guided missile, infrared guided missile, uh, designed by um, Beal BGT Defense as part of a German-led multinational program. You know, that, that program includes Greece, Norway, Italy, Spain, Sweden. So, you know, this missile, you know, started development around 1998. It had its first successful uh, missile launch, um, you know, ironically on F4F in March of 2002. And so what? why is this missile so good? So with a combination of its thrust vectoring, uh, high target tracking rate, and a 360 degree defense capability, you can essentially engage targets behind the aircraft. You know, it also has a lock on after launch feature, a proximity fuse, lots and lots of stuff. 
that make the Iris-T pretty deadly, far deadlier than an R-73 right now. And, uh, and also, before I forget, from what I could find, this missile has up to a 60G overload, so that's what's available on the internet. Um, really good features. And it's also compatible with the Eurofighter, F-16, the F-18, the Gripen, and the Iris-T is backwards compatible with the Sidewinder, um, basically any jet that uses Sidewinder uh, in either analog or digital interface, it can be fitted to the aircraft. So obviously not an IRST video, but I just wanted to kind of give you a window into how much more advanced these fourth and in some cases fifth generation infrared missiles are um, over something like a third generation R-73 and probably why we're not going to see them until the end of this year and maybe into the next. Now Gaijin really doesn't care about timelines like except when they do, but just to give you even more context here, the R-73 went into service in 1984 and the basic AM9M went into service in 1983. With the Iris-T, we're talking about 2002. It's a 2002 missile, and some of the other ones I was talking about even later than that. So this is just one example, um, you know, so you can kind of understand where I'm coming from a little bit. Anything resembling an R-73 in high off site capability is way too advanced in the moment, in my opinion. Um, and the R-73 just represents, like I said, that pacing threat. And um, we're not going to get anything better than that for the nations that don't really have anything until we move it along a little bit further, um, like I'm thinking in the next update. So there is hope for nations missing out uh, this time, but not until in a year, like I've been saying, at the earliest. Sweden will get the Gripen, of course, and Japan is probably going to get an F-15J. I don't really see the Mitsubishi F-2 coming. Germany will probably get the F-4F Ice. Um, or even maybe maybe a Swiss F-18 if people, um, you know, bulk at getting an F-4, even though it'll carry the AMRAAM, um, but people are kind of burned out on the F-4. And finally, you know, hope in China may get a J-10. Um, all of these jets will have the option, like I was saying, for AM-120 on the active radar homing side, and of course, um, for infrared missiles, AM-9Ms um, for the F-15J, the Mitsubishi AAM-3, and in the case of the um, Chinese J-10, maybe the PL-5E2 or a PL-9. Of course, all these jets uh, can carry better than what I'm specifying here. But, you know, right now we're in some really highly speculative territory anyway. Okay, so what should you do? Um, like I said, some nations are just going to miss out this time. So what should you do if you're not flying one of the nations that got the AM-9M or the R-73 or a buffed Magic 2? <laughs> You might just have to park it, um, run, land, park, and save your strength if you can't be bothered to grind the other trees um, until maybe the end of the year when I think more competition will materialize. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Um, I know a lot. I, I mean, it's it's not cool um, for nations that, that just are getting left out this time. It just isn't. I fly all the nations. I know some people main certain nations, though, because grinding takes a long time and um, you might be feeling a little bit bad about that. OK, uh, let me let me know what you guys think in the comments. And, uh, and if you like the video, hit that like button and uh, I'll see you in the future. Thanks for watching.